Vinyl Tag 2021. Yep, we're in 2021. Uh, a few days in now. I don't know. For, for a lot of people, nothing has changed, uh, given how hard things are out there. But uh, hopefully just the, the flip of the calendar has given some people some hope and relief, even if it's just mental relief. Um, so this year, I plan uh, on doing a bunch of giveaways. I have a number of duplicates of albums uh, that I've picked up over the years. And why not give them away? Um, I found a, a second copy of Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak recently, and I'm going to send it to the archivist, who some of you know from Mazzy's channel. Uh, she loves the record, doesn't have it, uh, and she will soon. Uh, so I'm going to start doing that here as uh, I roll out whatever videos I roll out uh, over the course of the year. Uh, and before doing my Vinyl Tag 2021, I'm looking over here because that's where the directions are. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank anyone and everyone who listens to my videos, or watches my videos rather, um, listens as well. Uh, I started this, I checked last night, almost a year ago. I never thought I'd get more than 20, 30 people following me or subscribing. Um, so it is, it's an honor, honestly, that people would come to hear me talk about music. I can talk about music forever. I spend most of my free time either listening to records, watching concerts on YouTube, watching uh, Vinyl Community. I watch a lot of those videos. Some of you probably don't know that I watch your channel, but um, I do, and I've found a, a ton of new music, and I've met some great people. Uh, over the course of the last year. So I really just wanted to to show some appreciation. Um, it means a lot to me that you care what I have to say about music. So uh, you'll never hear me say, click the subscribe or the bell button that people do. I don't, I'm fine with people who do that, but to me it feels like walking into a grocery store and people throwing food at you. Like, you know what you're there for, right? If, if you like my videos, you're gonna subscribe. Um, so, uh, that's it. Um, I gotta keep refreshing this to keep it on. So let's jump into the vinyl tag, uh, 2021. Um, and let's, uh, let's have at it. Um, I hope it's a much better year for you, your loved ones, people you know. People you don't know, um, hopefully we'll be turning some sort of corner in the next few months, but uh, let's talk a little music. Um, so, A Discovery of 2021, this is a, a, an artist that my friend Scott had been pushing on me for many, many years. I never really got into, and just this year, uh, I listened and uh, fell in love with this record. So this is... Uh, hooray for the Riff Raff, Small Town Heroes. Uh, what year did this come out? 2014. Um, they have a new record, I think it was last year, uh, that is also great. But this is my favorite. Um, just a fantastic record, singer-songwriter, sort of Gillian Welch meets I don't know who. Um, but I love this record. I'm glad I bought it, and thank you to my buddy Scott. Uh, for turning me on to that band. Uh, a quarantine buy, and one of the best buys that I've ever made. Uh, I did not know this record was out there. Uh, I, I knew it existed, but I didn't know that there was a reissue of it that sounds just incredible. Um, and this is Ted Hawkins, The Next Hundred Years. Ted Hawkins is one of my favorites. Um, some some wild stories about let's see what it looks like in here some some great shots of ted um and this is mobile fidelity i think universal special markets analog production quality record pressing um so i'm gonna i i'm gonna botch the story probably but i think the story was ted hawkins uh was a uh he performed on the santa monica pier i believe 
uh, for many, many years, was never signed to a label, and later in life uh, was discovered, I believe, by somebody at Universal Music. Uh, they churned out a number of records very quickly, um, and then Ted Hawkins passed away. Uh, he is the most perfect mix of soul, country, singer-songwriter, uh, gospel. Um, he is uh, tremendous, and I can't uh, recommend his records enough. Um, I have, I think, all of them that have been released, and this one, again, was just this year, and just, man, great, great stuff. Um, an LP you want to find in 2021. So there's nothing to show. Um, but one that I've been looking for for many, many years is by a band called Varnaline. I think the record is called Sweet Life. Uh, it is on Discogs at an outrageous price, which I will not cave for. Um, they're a band from the early 90s. I saw them at South by Southwest in 1999. Uh, and they were tremendous. Um, the the lead singer, whose name is escaping me right now, um, has gone on to to work with Jay Farrar, uh, Will Johnson, a number of folks, Andrews Parker, that's his name. He's put out a bunch of solo records that are also pretty good. Um, but I've been looking for Sweet Life for a long time, hoping I can find it this year. Um, a box set. I don't think I've shown this yet, but it's time to show this. Uh, Summer Teeth by Wilco, the reissue, uh, reissue of the 1999 record, I think. Yep. Uh, great back shot. Looks like they're at a DMV or something. Um, this was a, one of my favorites, I mean, it still is, but it was, this was among, this was a transformative record. And see, it kind of glows off the light, this weird coloring. Um, whoa. Uh, this was when Jeff Tweedy really turned uh, from a country rock artist to a record that sounds like pet sounds for real. Um, just incredible, incredible songs. Uh, some of the best songs he's ever written via Chicago. Some will say that is the best song he's ever written. Uh, She's a Jar, Shot in the Arm, We're Just Friends, Candy Floss. Uh, will always remind me of, of course, the late Jay Bennett, who I've mentioned many times, is who my dog is named after. Um, Jay Bennett died in 2009 and was instrumental in Wilco's evolution, as much as Jeff, I would say. Um, so uh, I was thrilled to see that box set. It's the best box set Wilco's put out uh, thus far. Um, I imagine Yankee Hotel Foxtrot is coming soon, 20 year anniversary in 2022, but it's really 2021 because it was, they released it to the masses before it came out on none such, they released it digitally. Um, so what do we got next? Uh, a concept album. And of course I've been thinking a lot about this family this year. Uh, this is Steve Earle's uh, tribute to Towns Van Zandt which I listened to a bunch this year. It's really grown on me. Um, there's Towns up, up there. Uh, just, Steve Earle was buddies with Towns. Um, we have some wild stories. There's the Russian roulette story that's really a sad one, but a crazy one. Um, look it up. Maybe I'll do a, a Towns video. I should do a Towns video. Um, but this holds up, uh, came out 11 years ago. And just given that I was thinking a lot about Justin Towns Earl this year, uh, I spun this quite a bit. Um, it's worth mentioning that today, Steve Earl has released his tribute album to his son, Justin Towns Earl, called JT. It's available on streaming services. I ordered it, I think from New West. So the vinyl's in the mail. Um, couldn't have been an easy record to make. Um, there's a great New York Times profile on Steve Earle from a few days ago where he talks about his son and what a tremendous talent he was, and um, that's worth checking out. But Steve Earle Towns, uh, a 
really, really good uh, concept tribute album. An album where an artist changed direction. I mean, he did, right? Uh, he was mostly rock and roll, turned pop on the record prior to this, The River, 1980. And then he went into uh, his home, turned on, this is called four track, I don't know anything about audio equipment, uh, and released this gorgeous, sparse record that I think um, is very relevant today, given the economic woes and uh, you know, the, the troubles we're facing from an economic standpoint right now. But Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska. A lot of people cite this as their favorite Bruce record. Um, it could easily be there. Uh, came out in 82. Uh, just love the artwork. Um, it's a dark record, Atlantic City, which is covered by the band, uh, covered by my friend Dom Little. Um, my favorite cover is Sunvolt's cover of Open All Night, which is on the Badlands record, Badlands tribute record. Um, but this is just, thank God Bruce made more records like this. Um, just him and sort of him and sitting down with the guitar. Um, Ghost of Tom Joad, uh, Devils and Dust. This, this, I think Devils and Dust is more music, but um, this was a, a departure and he nailed it. Uh, an album, or, no, that's what we just did. Uh, a white label promo. So this is gonna be in a video of, on its own, but I don't know if I've ever shared this. An advance of Uncle Tupelo's No Depression. Um, there's the, so, I don't know what the white label means, but so it's WMBR, which I believe is in Boston. Uh, Rockville pre-sell information. You can see this is the one sheet on the band before they were known by anyone. Uh, so it was entered into their system on June 24th, 1990, 30 years ago, it's crazy. Uh, and it says at the bottom, defective, the first three seconds of graveyard shift are missing. So I went to college in Boston and a few years after I graduated, I went back up with my girlfriend at the time. We went to a record store called Nuggets. Uh, I walked in and I would, I still do this. 30, no, this will be 21 years later. Um, I still go directly to the U's and the W's to see, and the S's for Sunvolt. So this is it's my thing, it's my, my jam, as the archivist would say. Uh, and this was sitting right there. Um, it was six bucks. I remember I brought it right up front and the guy sort of shook his head, the, 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 you know, the owner of the store, the, the, the gentleman, um, who was checking me out, uh, check <laughs> the cashier. Um, and I remember he, he said to me, uh, I knew I should have priced that higher. I didn't know what he meant. Uh, I mean, I, I knew what he meant, but um, he said it came in today and I knew somebody was gonna gobble it right up. And that was me. And I remember he was, he, I, I think he was thinking about raising the price in real time. And I kind of looked at him, I was like, oh, six bucks. And he honored the price. Uh, and, whoa, I don't know what this is worth. I don't, I've never seen it anywhere. Um, a compilation album by one of my favorite bands ever that has never gotten their due, Slobberbone. I mentioned this, I think, in my uh, end of video where I talk about records that I wish more people knew about. Uh, it's one of the best bands, certainly of the 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Brent Best, who uh, I know I'm very, uh, very happy to call a friend. I met him at South by Southwest over the years. We chat on social media and text or, or email from time to time. Um, my, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll share this. Uh, he put out a solo record. I was not intending to share this, but he put out a solo record in 2014, which I will now grab. Called Your Dog Champ. It's my dog. That's Bennett. Um, 
wild story. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I, I was I became I know Brent a little bit. Um, he's a very sweet, funny, uh, self-deprecating, charming guy. Uh, and in two thousand, must have been two thousand. I think this came out fourteen or sixteen. Uh, on Lanch, Last Chance Records, um, he reached out to me over Facebook and asked if I recalled having taken a photo of my dog in a parking lot. First, I didn't know what he was talking about, and then it sort of came to mind. I was like, oh yeah, that was on my uh, a trip that I took to Yellowstone right after I adopted Bennett. Um, and this was in Winnemucca, is that Nevada? I think it's Nevada. Um, and we just got out of the car and I played ball with him. And Brent saw the photo that I posted on Facebook, asked if he could use it for his album cover. And of course I said yes, um, at no cost. <laughs> this is a an absolute treat. One of the best songwriters I think in the last 25 years. And my now immortal pup is on the cover. Uh, Little diversion, but it's a pretty good story, <laughs> at least for me. Uh, an album that tells a story. Let me get a little coffee there. I don't know what the story is, but whenever I need to just relax, um, I listen to a lot of ambient music. It really helps uh, with anxiety or just meditation. And this is a record that I often listen to. Uh, Brian Eno, uh, Apollo, Atmospheres, and Soundtracks. Specifically the song Deep Blue Day. Uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous track. I love, I have almost all of Brian Eno's records. He has uh, a double album, I think, which is a compilation of soundtrack, songs on soundtracks that's coming out in a few weeks. I pre-ordered that. I think it comes out January 22nd. Um, if you like Brian Eno, look it up. It looks like it's a worthwhile purchase. Um, album that tells us, an album that needs a vinyl pressing. This one's easy. I come to it every time. Uh, Richard Buckner's Devotion and Doubt. Uh, Richard Buckner, songwriter, uh, who just released his first book. Um, I saw Richard Buckner many, many times. I was introduced to him. I believe he opened up for, I know he opened up for Sumble, but I'm, Sumble, but I'm not sure if I knew him before that. Uh, Mark Rabot, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, was on lead guitar. <clears throat> I think Dave Schramm may have been in the band as well. It was at the Bowery Ballroom in New York. <clears throat> this is Buckner's second record. Bloomed was first, which was on Overcoat recordings, I think an independent. This came out on MCA, yeah, in 97. And just a dark record, but just an absolutely gorgeous record that is perfect for vinyl. Um, so Richard Buckner's Devotion and Doubt, maybe I'll have to put it out. It's getting put out at some point. Um, an album that needs a common album and an uncommon album. So, common album, I tried to go with something I listened to a lot this year, and I put this on a bunch. Tom Petty's Greatest Hits. Who doesn't love this? Um, I've got a lot of Tom Petty, but sometimes you just want the hits. And there were a number of times where I needed sort of a jolt of uh, life this year, and I turned to Tom Petty. I listened to a lot of Tom Petty this year. Um, all right, and you just side one, American Girl, Breakdown, Listen to Her Heart, I Need to Know, and Refugee. Uh, not a bad way to kick off a day. Um, so, common album, Petty's Greatest Hits. <clears throat> An uncommon album, and one that I absolutely love, is this. Uh, Tim Easton, who was in the Haynes Boys. Haynes Boys? Yeah. Um, uh, he has a, I guess, a, a super group uh, uh, with a couple gentlemen who I believe are both from Alaska, uh, if I have that right. It's called Eastern Stagger Phillips, called Resolution Road. You see they signed uh, this. I actually got a copy of this and it arrived broken. Um, the vinyl was shattered. So it was within a few days I got a replacement and they signed it. They didn't sign the original one. So I think it was a, 
a make good. And I remember I was incredibly grateful and wrote them um, a thank you uh, note. But this is a great singer-songwriter album that most people don't know. Um, I don't know the year. It was probably around, I don't know, 2010? Um, I highly recommend finding this. Easton Stagger Phillips, Resolution Road. Oh, uh, an EP? I kind of just grabbed a random. Because I, I, don't, I don't think I've, I don't know if I've spoken or talked about Josh Ritter. Um, who for a good 15 years is one of my favorite artists. have sort of fallen off, uh, but this is a, an EP he put out in 2012. The lead song is Why, and that is a great song. But Josh Ritter is just a tremendous talent, one of the better songwriters of the last 20 plus years, or 20-ish years. Uh, if you're looking for one uh, specific record, his best is The Historical Conquest of Josh Ritter, in my opinion, some would say The Animal Years. Historical Conquest is, in 2010, I was doing some writing for uh, a news site, and I did my top 50 records of the decade, and this Historical Conquest of Josh Ritter was number two, uh, behind the Wrens, Massachusetts. So Josh Ritter is worth checking out. Uh, a girl group, saw Mazzy mention this recently. Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, and Emmylou Harris. I've listened to all three of these uh, artists a ton this year. Uh, I'm gonna confess, I don't know this record all that well. Uh, I was gonna go with a, a predictable, well, <clears throat> um, a more uh, obvious, I guess, girl band group, but I saw this and since I've been listening to so much of all three, especially Linda Ronstadt this year, I've been listening to a ton of her uh, records. Figured I'd go with this one. You know what? I'm gonna put it on today. Uh, it's called Trio. Got it for six bucks. Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstad, and the great Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, an album cover you love. I think I've shared this as well. Probably my favorite album cover ever. The replacements Let It Be on, I think, the, the roof of one of their parents' homes in somewhere in Minnesota. Uh, Fantastic record, um, but the album cover, Tommy Stinson, he's a kid, he's like 16 there or something. Uh, Paul Westerberg, of course, Chris Mars, and Tommy's brother, the late Bob Stinson. <clears throat> That's about as good as rock and roll album covers get. Let it be by the replacements. Uh, an album I've listened to the most, I've shared this as well. Uh, this is the album that I think I listened to the most this year, Justin Towns Earl, Harlem River Blues. Uh, a fantastic record. We lost Justin Towns Earl uh, this year. Still breaks my heart. Um, top to bottom, Harlem River Blues, uh, which is probably, I think, the best track on the new Steve Earl tribute album. Uh, One More Night in Brooklyn, Wandering might be my favorite song on the record. Christchurch Woman, uh, Rogers Park. This is a fantastic record. I think it came out in 2010, yeah. Um, Justin Towns Earl, Harlem River Blues. I think it's a bit hard to find now. Um, an album you got, you had to get an OG copy of. I think this is the only copy, I don't know if it's an OG, but it is the most I've ever spent on a record. And it was this year. Uh, it was sometime over the summer I had discovered, oh my God, it's incredibly heavy. Uh, I had discovered this while I was getting into ambient music and I was looking at lists and um, I had to have it. And it was way overpriced, or not, I don't know, it's, it's all relative, but it was very expensive. And I found a, a used copy that was dinged a bit that was f much cheaper than what you would normally find. And this is the 12,000 pound box set the Disintegration Loops by William Bazinski. There's a lot going on in there. Uh, this reached fame after 9-11. Um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but I was in New York on 9-11. I was actually below, I was on the F train below the towers when the first, right around when the first tower collapsed. 
we didn't feel anything incredibly um but when i looked at the timing of where i was we sat there we were, we were delayed by about 40 minutes uh and we had no idea what was going on at the time um we just thought it was a, a normal delay um so i have many vi very vivid memories of that day um but william bazinski uh who i believe lived in brooklyn had and it was right, I think it was right after 9-11, had discovered a number of uh, recordings he had made where the tapes, uh, I think they were actually like tapes, cassette tapes, um, were disintegrating and they were making this, this sort of loop noise. And he started recording it because it reminded him or it had a feel of what New York felt like on 9-11. And he was right. Um, I listen to this, it gives me, um, I, hope that, I don't think it's creepy, it gives me, it reminds me of that day, but also is sort of soothing. It reminds me of how much I love New York, how much I miss New York, how much when this quarantine and lockdown uh, hopefully fades, I will be going to New York, um, maybe even for good. Uh, but the disintegration loops, you can find it on streaming services, it is just gorgeous. Gorgeous music. William Bazinski put out another record this year, which I bought. Uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but I plan to, and I probably will this week. Um, the last album you purchased, I purchased two over the weekend uh, because I found a record store near me, <laughs> one mile from my front door. It had been in uh, the neighborhood for many years. I went twice over the years and never... It was not great, but it's either under new ownership or they've stepped up their game because it's now pretty great. Um, I went over the weekend. Uh, they only allow a few people in at a time. Everybody's spaced out. I know it, we always have to caveat that, right? Just to share that we're playing by the rules. Um, and it was, I'm really excited to have found it. Um, so I bought, finally, I caved and bought the Fiona Apple Fetch the Bolt Cutters. I've never been a huge Fiona Apple fan, but man, I'm, I listened to it over the weekend. This is a, a great record. I know most, I kept the receipt in there. I saw somebody in the vinyl community who keeps their receipts, and I'm gonna try doing that just for memories, uh, nostalgia's sake. Uh, so I love this. And then I found a record that I've been looking for for a long time, um, not very hard. Uh, so it sort of just pops into my head once in a while, but I saw it. Barbara Manning in New Zealand. Um, I just got, my brother was a huge Barbara Manning fan. She was in the band, the SF Seals. Um, and I have one of her records, uh, Run, Running With Scissors. I can't remember the exact title, but I've always wanted this one. And I finally found it uh, at a reasonable price. Um, so really excited about that. Uh, an album they don't get, which I listened to over the weekend. I don't know if they don't get it, but I get it. And I love this band, the Counting Crows. Their second release, Recovering the Satellites, got a little bit of fame recently because of the line from A Long December, something maybe this year will be better than the last. And a lot of people are posting it right around New Year's. Um, I don't know what, I haven't heard the Counting Crows records of the past 10-ish years, but their first three or four, I still love. Uh, and this one does not get uh, the due that it deserves. It was a great follow-up. Uh, Catapult, Daylight, day, day, listen to Daylight Fading today. Just give it a shot. Um, or Good Night Elizabeth. Uh, it's just a, a really good record. Uh, looks like it was reissued in 2016. I'm glad I got it. I looked, poked around for their third record. Uh, name is escaping me right now, and it is pricey. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna be getting that one. Um, what do we got left? A punk album. I got a bunch of punk albums, but I grabbed this because I've been listening to it a lot lately. Modern Lovers, Jonathan Richmond's brilliant record. Uh, I. I have a, I created a new playlist and it's got Old World on there and I just keep playing that song because I love it so much. Um, 
Can't go wrong, Jonathan Richman, the modern lovers. As good as it gets. And finally, favorite 2020 reissue. Um, I mean, petty, right? It's just, it sounds so good and the bonus material is so amazing, but I figured I'd try something not petty. Um, and it is a record I have wanted on vinyl for ages. Uh, Amy Mann's Bachelor Number no. 2, which came in some sweet green. I think it's, yeah. Look at that. Pretty nice. Uh, I'm getting into the colored vinyl. I know some people say it doesn't sound as good as the traditional black vinyl, but it sounds pretty good to me. Uh, this is a just a great, great record. This period, I love everything Amy Mann uh, put out, but this especially. It's always tied to the Magnolia soundtrack, um, but Bachelor number two. Vinyl Tag 2021 is wrapped up. But this time I didn't forget that I need to name a record I wish more people knew about, and this is really a band. Uh, as far as I know, they only have one record on vinyl, which is this one, and it's Richmond Fontaine's The Fitzgerald. Uh, they're a Portland band from the uh, 90s. Willie Vlauten, who went on to, to write a number of novels. The Motel Life is one. <clears throat> um, but this has uh, Casino Lights, man, what a song that is. Exit 194B. Uh, Incident at Conklin Creek. Um, this is a great band. Uh, I would just try to find a compilation of theirs. Um, but Richmond Fontaine, the Fitzgerald, I think it's not too not too hard to find on vinyl. Came out in two, maybe it is hard to find, I don't know. 2016, I got it, uh, I think off of Discogs. Uh, that is all. Um, thank you again for watching. Thank you again for turning me on to new music. Uh, I hope this is a better year for many, I mean, all of us, but especially the people who have really been hit hard this year. Uh, I hope things, or last year, I hope things, uh, it's gonna be slow, but I hope they slowly turn around um, and that better days are ahead. Uh, again, I'll be doing uh, a bunch of giveaways over the next few months. And uh, I look forward to, to watching your videos and to keep talking about this world that we love. Uh, have a good week, and I'll talk to you soon.